Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, you will learn how to solve linear simultaneous equations using Gauss-Seidel method. So let us consider an example. Solve the following simultaneous equations by using Gauss-Seidel method. Do four iterations. Take initial approximation as x1 is equal to 0, x2 is equal to 0, x3 is equal to 0. So first equation is 3x plus 8y plus 29z is equal to 71. Second equation is 83x plus 11y minus 4z is equal to 95. And third equation is 7x plus 52y plus 13z is equal to 104. So we have to solve these equations by using gauss riddle method. So for that, first we have to check for diagonal dominance. For this, let us consider a general set of linear simultaneous equations. So for such a set of simultaneous equations, condition for diagonal dominance is mod of AII is greater than or equal to summation of mod of AIJ when J is not equal to I. And this is for all values of I. So for I is equal to 1, this equation can be written like this. Here A11 is 3. So here this 3 should be greater than or equal to summation of 8 and 29. But here this condition is not satisfying. Now if you take i is equal to 2, then this condition can be written like this. So here a22 is 11. So here this 11 should be greater than or equal to summation of 83 and 4. So here also this condition is not satisfying. And if you take i is equal to 3, then this condition can be written like this. So here, a33 is 13. So this 13 should be greater than or equal to summation of 7 and 52. Here also, this condition is not satisfying. So, condition for diagonal dominance is not satisfying. So for this, we have to rearrange the equations. If you observe, for second equation, coefficient of x is greater. So we can take this as a first equation. If you see third equation, here coefficient of y is greater. So we can take this as second equation. And for first equation, coefficient of z is greater. So we can take this as third equation. So we can rearrange these equations like this. So here, if we check condition for diagonal dominance, then for i is equal to 1, a11 is 83 and this 83 should be greater than or equal to summation of 11 and absolute value of minus 4. So here 11 plus 4 is 15. So 83 is greater than 15. So this condition is satisfying. So if you take i is equal to 2, then a22 is 52 here. So this 52 should be greater than or equal to summation of 7 and 13. Here also 7 plus 13 is 20. So 52 is greater than 20. So this condition is satisfying. So condition for diagonal dominance is satisfying. So here also this condition is satisfying. Then if you take i is equal to 3, then a33 is 29 here. So this 29 should be greater than or equal to 3 plus 8. So here also this condition is satisfying. So here if we rearrange these equations like this, then condition for diagonal dominance is satisfying. So we can go for first step of gauss seidel method. So in gauss seidel method, from first equation, we have to take x on one side and all other terms on another side of equal to sign. From second equation, we have to take y on one side and all other terms on another side of equal to sign. And from third equation, we have to take z on one side and all other terms on another side. So if we do like this, then from first equation we will get formula for x from second equation we will get formula for y and from third equation we will get formula for z so we can consider these equations as equation number one equation number two and equation number three so these three equations will act as the formula to calculate values of x y z so we can go for iteration number one in problem it is given that take initial approximation as y is equal to 0, 
and z is equal to 0. So if you put y is equal to 0 and z is equal to 0 in equation number 1, then we will get new value of x. So new value of x is 1.1446. Then we can take second equation. In second equation, we have to put value of x and z. So here we have to put new value of x. So to calculate value of y, we have to put x is equal to 1.1446 which is new value of x and value of z as 0. So if you put these values in equation number 2, then we will get new value of y as 1.8459. Then to calculate value of z, we can use equation number 3. So in equation number 3, we have to put value of x and y. So here also, we have to put the updated value of x and y. So by putting x is equal to 1.1446 and y is equal to 1.8559, equation 3 can be written like this. So we will get value of z as 1.8207. Now we can go for iteration number 2. For iteration number 2, again we have to calculate value of x. So to calculate value of x, we have to put value of y and value of z. So here we have to use the updated values or latest value of y and z. So by putting this latest value of y and z in equation number 1, we will get new value of x as 0 0.9877. Now to calculate new value of y, we have to use equation number 2. So here we have to put updated value or latest value of x and z. So here, updated value of x is 0 0.9877. So we have to put x is equal to 0 0.9877. And latest value of z is 1.8207. So by putting these values, we will get new value of y as 1.4119. Now, to calculate new value of z, we have to use equation number 3. And here, we have to put latest values of x and y. So here, latest value of x is 0 0.9877 and latest value of y is 1.4119. So if you put these values in equation number 3, then we will get z is equal to 1.9566. So these are the values of x, y, z after second iteration. Now we can write the solution in tabulated form. So in table, first column is iteration number, second column is x value, third column is y column and fourth column is z column. So here initial values of x, y, z are given in the problem. So we can write here. Then by using y is equal to 0 and z is equal to 0, we have calculated value of x. Then to calculate value of y, we have used z is equal to 0 and x is equal to this new value. So we have got this value of y. Then to calculate value of z, we have used this new value of x and new value of y. So we have got this value of z. Similarly, for second iteration, we have got these values of x, y, z by using updated values of x, y, z. Similarly, for third iteration also, we have to use these equations. To calculate value of x, we have to use latest value of y and z. So here latest value of y is 1.4119 and latest value of z is 1.9566. So if you put these values of y and z in equation number 1, we will get new value of x as 1.0518. And to calculate value of y, we have to use second equation. Now here we have to use x as 1.0518 and z as 1.9566. Now to calculate the next value of z, we have to use third equation and here value of x will be 1.0518 and value of y is 1.3693. So we will get new value of z. So in this way, by using latest value in these equations, we will get updated values of x, y, z. Similarly, we can calculate values of fourth iteration. So in given problem, it was mentioned to do the four iteration. So values in the last row is the solution of given problem. Now sometimes in problem instead of number of iterations desired accuracy is given. So we need to calculate error after each iteration. So we can use this relative error formula that is mod of x new minus x old 
divided by x nu. So here there are three solution that is solution of x, solution of y and solution of z. So we have to calculate relative error three times and out of that three errors we have to consider the maximum error. So here after first iteration we can calculate the error. So after first iteration error in x is 1.1446 minus 0 divided by 1.1446 which is equal to 1. After first iteration error in y is 1.8459 minus 0 divided by 1.8459 which is also equal to 1. And for z relative error is 1.8207 minus 0 divided by 1.8207 which is also equal to 1. So after first iteration error is 1. Now after second iteration we can calculate error in x as mod of 0 0.9877 minus 1.1446 divided by 0 0.9877. Then error in y it is mod of 1.4119 minus 1.8459 divided by 1.4119. Similarly error in z after second iteration is mod of 1.9566 minus 1.8207 divided by 1.9566. So out of these three errors, maximum error is 0.3074. So in this way, we have to calculate the three errors after each iteration and we have to consider the maximum error out of that three errors. So after third iteration, maximum error is 0 0.0609. And after fourth iteration, maximum error is 0 0.0056. So here we can say that our answer is accurate up to two decimal places. Also, we can compare the last two iterations. So here we can see for last two values of x, after decimal places, two digits are similar. For value of y also, after decimal places, two digits are same. And for value of z, after decimal places, all four digits are similar. So we can say values of x, y, z are accurate up to two decimal places. In another video, we have seen how to solve the problem by using Jacobi iteration method. Now we will compare the gauss seidel method and Jacobi iteration method. So for current problem, by using gauss seidel method, we have got this table. And if we solve same problem, by using Jacobi iteration method, then we will get this solution. Now, difference between Jacobi iteration method and gauss seidel method is, in case of Jacobi iteration method, to calculate new values, we have to use the previous iteration values. Whereas, in case of gauss seidel method, to calculate next value, we have to use the latest value. Means, for first iteration, to calculate value of x, we have used y is equal to 0, z is equal to 0. Then to calculate value of y, we have used x is equal to 1.1446 and z is equal to 0. And to calculate value of z, we have used x is equal to 1.1446 and y is equal to 1.8459. Whereas in case of Jacobi iteration method, to calculate value of x, we have used y is equal to 0 and z is equal to 0. Then to calculate value of y, we have used x is equal to 0, z is equal to 0. And to calculate value of z, we have used x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. In this way, in Jacobi iteration method, to calculate value of next iteration, we have used values of previous iteration. Whereas, in case of gauss seidel method, to calculate value of x, y, z, we have used latest value of x, y, z. And if you compare the solution in gauss seidel method, after fourth iteration, we have got solution accurate up to two decimal places. But if we solve same problem by using Jacobi iteration method, then to get accuracy up to two decimal places, we required six iterations. So we can say gauss seidel method is faster than Jacobi iteration method. Thank you for watching.